With all the fallen leaves blanketing the ground, autumn is a great time of year to search for mushrooms on old logs and tree stumps. It was here that I found four different brownish colored guild mushrooms on a recent hike in northwest Indiana. At first glance they were so similar looking I wondered if they might be the same species. But what I learned is that they are all separate species that are actually quite common and that three of them are considered edible while one is deadly poisonous. In this video I'll go over the subtle traits that led me to identifying each of them. Brownish colored guild mushroom. That's a pretty broad description. It actually fits around half the mushrooms in a typical field guide. So before we dive into it, let me share a few factors that help me narrow down the list of suspects. First is location and habitat. Northwest Indiana is located in eastern North America, and the path I hiked follows a small river lined with deciduous trees. Beech, maple, oak, hickory, elm, basswood, hornbeam, sycamore, and pawpaw. Importantly, there were no conifers here, which rules out a few entire mushroom families that associate exclusively with conifers. Another helpful factor is seasonality, as many species don't appear in autumn in this region. And last, each of these mushrooms was growing on dead wood. Noting when they are growing, where they are growing, and what they are growing on narrows down the list considerably. So let's start with the first mushroom I found. This species was growing both solo and in loose clusters. We can see its stems are thick and club-shaped, with swollen bases. The caps range from brown to brownish yellow with a darker center and they're covered in small yellowish to brownish scales that are denser towards the center. When young, these mushrooms have a cottony veil over their cap. It's worth noting that this veil lacks the spiderweb-like threads typical of the Cordonarius genus, so we can rule out that possibility. Veils on court mushrooms have a distinctive look, which this one clearly doesn't match. On mature mushrooms, the veil pulls apart to form a white ring zone on the stem that has a yellowy edge. The gills start as creamy white in young mushrooms, turning to pale orange as they age. They're closely spaced, with short gills appearing frequently. Its cap surface is slightly sticky or slimy, especially when young, and the cap shape starts out convex before flattening with age. I believe this is Armillaria gallica, one of the honey mushrooms. This species appears in autumn and has a white spore print, which is an important trait for distinguishing it from a deadly look-alike. It's an edible mushroom, but for some people it needs to be cooked thoroughly to avoid gastrointestinal agony. The particular scale pattern of the caps, thick stems with cottony rings, whitish gills, and its tendency to grow in clusters are the main traits that led me towards an Armillaria ID. That said, it's worth mentioning there is a species of Armillaria that is ringless. The next mushroom I found seemed to have fruited a while ago, as its caps were drying out, splitting, or even morphing into an umbilate shape. But let's try to identify it despite not having any younger specimens to work with. This mushroom grows in clusters. You'll notice its stems are thick with a flimsy ring or ring zone and have a somewhat scaly texture. The cap is brownish yellow and covered with yellowish brown scales that are distinctively arranged in concentric circles. The gills are attached to the stem, closely spaced or almost crowded, and have a tawny brown color. When I pull the cap away from the stem, there's a sticky slimy layer clinging to it even though these mushrooms are mostly dried out. This suggests it was even more slimy when young. Based on these traits, I'd place this mushroom in the Foliota adiposa group of species. These mushrooms typically appear in late summer and fall and have a brown spore print. They are edible and are regularly eaten in many parts of Asia. The next mushroom I came across was small in size but appeared in large numbers. Its caps are smooth with no scales or hairs, and they have a two-tone look. Honey yellow at the edges and becoming cinnamon to brownish orange towards the center. The stems range from white to brown, darker near the base with whitish fibers running along the length. Most have a thin, rusty brown bracelet-like ring around the stem. The gills are yellowish to rusty brown, close to nearly distant, with frequent short gills mixed in. 
and they're attached to the stem, maybe even running down it barely. The flesh is watery brown and it's moist but not sticky or slimy. I believe this mushroom is the deadly gallerina, also known as the funeral bell. This species contains potent amatoxins which can be fatal if consumed. It appears from spring through fall and has a rusty brown spore print, a key feature that helps distinguish it from edible lookalikes. The bracelet-like ring is another key feature, but it can be difficult to spot on some specimens. The final mushroom I found was growing in dense clusters, bursting from the side of a recently deceased elm tree. Its small caps are orangish-brown, fading to a paler shade towards the margins. The gills are creamy white, closely spaced to nearly distant, and attached to the stem. The caps are smooth and very slimy to the touch. The stems are thin and tough, dark brown and velvety at the base, becoming creamy white towards the top. I believe this mushroom is Flamulina volutipes, commonly known as the velvet foot. This species appears in fall and winter and is considered a choice edible. The enoki mushrooms found in grocery stores are actually a cultivated form of a Flamulina species from Southeast Asia, so the wild velvet foot probably has a similar taste and texture. So three of the four mushrooms we looked at are edible and sought after. But personally, for me, it's just not worth the risk of harvesting these edible mushrooms when the deadly gallerina grows in the same habitats and can look quite similar. Even if you have strong ID skills, it's entirely possible a gallerina could poke out among a cluster of velvet foot or honey mushrooms. My main interest is to admire mushrooms and appreciate their role in the ecosystem. When it comes to wild harvesting, I stick to easily identified mushrooms like morels and maitake. But if you decide to harvest any of the mushrooms featured in this video, please proceed with caution and be sure to take spore prints to confirm your IDs.